excellent now before we go to the next example uh, i just want to discuss few important things from these surface integrals especially the surface integral that corresponds to vector field now let's say we have a vector field f which illustrates using these uh, magenta arrows and then we have a unit normal field n for a given surface s and those normal fields are depicted uh, using these blue arrows now when we calculate the surface integral of this vector field f we consider a quantity called quantity f dot n now this this quantity represents the vector field that points in the normal direction that points in the normal direction and so as an example if your vector field f represents a fluid flow then f dot n represents the fluid flow that goes through the surface in the direction of this unit normal n now when we integrate this over the entire surface s then you will get the total volume that crosses the surface um, surface s now sometimes in physics or in mathematics we call this integral as a flux integral so this is a flux integral flux sometimes this vector field f can be a fluid flow or it can be a magnetic field or gravitational free field then this entire integral will give you some kind of a volume and we call that volume as a flux integral a flow across this surface s flow across this surface s and the second remark is with respect to this normal normal vector n now if you give me a surface that has two sides yes yeah, sometimes we can have a surface with one surface but let's say we have a surface with two sides then we can and then we can define two normal vectors at a given point one points in this n1 direction and the second one points in this n2 direction so which normal vector should we use in these calculations well we select the normal vector n that points in the positive direction from the surface so when we derive this flux integral and here i consider the normal vector with the positive c component as you can see this this third component is positive 1 so this points in the positive c positive c direction and if you use this formula you will get you will always get the correct normal um so just remember that in in these calculations we consider the normal vector that points in the positive direction so which we select we select this one and a quick way to identify the correct normal vector is consider the third component if it points in the positive c direction um then that's the outside of s and that's your outward pointing normal vector outward pointing normal vector okay now let's go to the second example okay now here i use the word flux so evaluate the flux of the vector field f that equals to y comma negative x comma c through the conic surface this is our conic surface c equals to square root of x square plus y square my c values goes from 0 to 1 oriented upward okay so my normal should points in the positive c direction okay um so let's consider the flux integral 
then the flux integral or simply the flux equals to f dot n ds over the surface s and your surface s is the part of this conic that goes from uh, your c values goes from 0 to 1 okay um, now using the formula that we derived earlier this double integral equals to f is y comma negative x comma now on this surface on this conic surface c value equals to x squared plus square root of x squared plus y squared so we have that that's the normal vector field that's the ve vector field f and next here we should have minus f sub x minus f sub y and 1 dA over domain D. Now your f, your f of x comma y is a square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's calculate f sub x. f sub x equals to derivative of partial derivative of x squared plus y squared to the power one half with respect to the x variable and this will give you one half x squared plus y squared to the power negative one half times two x so simply this equals to x over square root of x squared plus y squared Let's see f sub x. If you calculate f sub y, you should get one half times x squared plus y squared to the power negative one half times two y. Mm. Which equals to y over square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, now so if you substitute these two quantities into the equation, you should get should get double integral over the domain D of y comma negative x comma square root of x squared plus y squared dot minus x over square root of x squared plus y squared f sub x equals to positive x over square root of x squared plus y squared but here we have this extra negative sign then negative f sub y should be negative y over square root of x squared plus y squared comma 1 dA and yes, so we have the correct normal because this is the normal that points outward from the surface S because its C component is positive 1. Let me draw this surface. Um, so we have this coordinate axis. Y C and then we have this corn the surface of the corn is your S. The surface of the corn is your S. The surface is your S. Uh, let me use a different color. It's just blue. That's your S. C values goes from 0 to 1. So this, this C value should be 1. 
Now your outward pointing normal vector maybe is something like this. At every point you will get normal vector like this. So that's your normal vector and normal vector field. And it's pointing outward because its C component is it's a positive number. As you can see, if you think about a normal vector like this, its C component is negative. So that's an inward pointing normal vector. But here we use the outward pointing normal vector. Okay, great. Now, now we want to identify this domain D. Okay, so if you look from the top, you will see a circle okay, so this is c equals to square root of x squared plus y squared and here your c value equals to 1 so at this point we have x squared plus sorry square root of x squared plus y squared equals to 1 which is same as x squared plus y squared equals to 1 so what do we see? We see a circle with radius. We see a circle with radius 1. That's your domain. That's your domain on the xy plane. The equation of this is boundary of this domain is x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Okay, now let me copy this. Okay, let's simplify the integrand. So we have d this is just a simple dot product so you will get negative x y over square root of x squared plus y squared negative times negative becomes positive so we have positive x y over square root of x squared plus y squared and then plus square root of x squared plus y squared times 1 dA over the domain d uh, as you can see, we can cancel this part with this. You simply left with square root of x squared plus y squared dA. Now, to solve this double integral, obviously, we are going to use um, polar coordinates. So, by using polar coordinates, We get okay, in polar coordinates x squared plus y squared is r squared. So we have a square root of r squared. Area element dA is r dr d theta. r goes from 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And the reason for that is the boundary of this circle is x squared plus y squared and its radius is 1. And we have a full circle. Therefore, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now, if you integrate this, you will get um, so this is the square root of r squared is r. r times this r becomes r squared squared dr d theta. Now, if you integrate r squared, you will get r to the power 3 over 3 lower limit is 0 upper limit is 1 so we have integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 third d theta this equals to 1 third times theta theta goes from 0 to 2 pi for we will get 2 pi over 3 
2 pi over 3. So this is the value of the flux integral. It means so this simply says we have a flow, we have a net flow that goes through the surface in this direction. We have a net positive flow. Uh, 